Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Anna and I'm so glad that you're here today. Today I have a fun little tutorial for you that will make Thanksgiving just a little bit more special than it already is. I don't know about you, but this year has been rough, <laughs> 2020. So any little thing that we can do to make our days a little extra special without having to do a lot is something that you can sign me up for. So I thought this would be a really fun way to decorate the table while we're having our Thanksgiving meal without having to spend a lot of money on, you know, pretty fall decorations or anything like that, but that still give you that sense of something special. So I thought it'd be fun to make some place cards. I have a little girl right now, so she loves the animals and all that kind of thing. And since it is Thanksgiving, I thought it'd be fun to make some turkey place cards. Now, the nice thing about these is that they're completely customizable. You can use whatever cardstock you have on hand to match your decor and aesthetic. So I'm gonna show you two ways to make these little fun guys that will just brighten up your table and help you feel just a little bit more grateful for what's in front of you. So I'm gonna walk you step-by-step step through the process of how I created these. I started in Procreate, you could actually use paper if you wanted to, to draw the little patterns for the tail feathers and the turkey body. And then I had my machine cut them out for me so that I could just get to work right away rather than hand cutting them all. And I made two versions. I made this flat version, which I really like for laying on top of the plates or on your napkins. I think it looks a little bit more sophisticated and it's really, again, easy to customize. I used plain white cardstock and I simply embossed the tail feathers. <laughs> and I included a slip for the name there. And I think it just looks so cute laying there on the plate or the napkin. You can also make a 3D version, which is what my daughter really loves. And I think this would be an excellent activity for the kids table. Uh, if you have that many people at your Thanksgiving celebration this year, it's a little iffy depending on where you live right now. But I thought this would make a really fun little activity for the kids if you wanted to have them do something while everyone is kind of either watching football or whatever it is that happens on your Thanksgiving. Or you could actually size these up and make table centerpieces. So these are actually stand-up place cards. As you can see, they'll actually stand on your table and hold the little name of whomever is supposed to sit at that seat. I also used double-sided cardstock so that it looks good from every angle, which I would suggest doing that with the name as well. I didn't realize it until I did this. <laughs> so anyway, I hope that you are excited about this. Let me know if you make it. Uh, I will leave the pattern for you guys, a way for you to find it or to easily create it yourself in the description box below. Please subscribe and let me know what other videos you would like to see from me. So if you'd like to see how I put these turkeys together, <laughs> stay tuned and let's jump into the tutorial. So to streamline the process, I'm going to be using my iPad to create my patterns. So I'm going into the app called Procreate and I'm going to create a canvas that is 8x8 or 2400 by 2400 pixels with a DPI of 300 just to keep it simple. Next I'm going to go into the drawing guide and click on the wrench and click on symmetry and I just want a dual symmetry and that allows me to draw something on one side and have it perfectly created on the other and this is just a really quick and easy way to create shapes that will be symmetrical, which is what I want since I want to fold my pattern in order to create that 3D effect of the turkey body. So I'm going to start by drawing the turkey body and I'm just drawing like a peanut shape and filling that in to make it a solid shape. I added a feather here at the top of his head, but I ended up removing that later on just because I didn't like the way it looked and I also thought it'd be more difficult for the machine to cut it and I wanted it to be a really smooth and easy process. On a new layer, I created the turkey lower half of the body. So I started by creating a circle quick shape and then made sure that it was centered in the middle of the document. 
And for some reason it didn't close all the way, so I just made sure that I could close the circle and I filled in the shape with the same color black. And then I'm gonna go in and actually change it into a bit of a, more of an ellipse or a fat circle <laughs> or an oval so that it would look more like a, a, the turkey body rather than perfectly round. Again, making sure that it's centered so that it, I get that really easy symmetrical shape that again will make it easier to cut and create our turkey later on. Now one thing I will tell you is to create all of these on separate layers because this really allows you to manipulate everything and get the look that you want. So here I'm now drawing the tail feather shape which is just a teardrop. I did not draw this with the symmetrical drawing guide. I just drew it freehand and then I duplicated it and moved it around to make sure that I liked how it looked but you only actually need one of these. So I used the really nice features that Procreate offers to flip them and all of that kind of thing just so that I could quickly create that full bodied tail that the turkey has. And then I went ahead and filled those shapes in as well. Here you can see I'm deleting the head feather because I just didn't like the way it looked. And again, I wanted the machine to cut it rather quickly and adding those small intricate details just makes it take longer. You could totally do it, uh, it's just not necessary. So now I'm just going in and tweaking the shape a little bit. I wanted it to look a bit more dramatic, the curve of that turkey neck. So I just went into the warp tool and kind of pushed things around until I got them looking the way I wanted. So now that everything looks the way I want, I'm just going to take those shapes and send them to my computer. So I just need the tail feather and the turkey body, and I'm going to go in and turn off my background so that I can share it to my computer as a PNG. This just makes it really easy for the software to read, and it's just so quick and seamless. So I'm turning off the background color, go into the wrench and then share and I am airdropping it to my computer. You can email it to yourself, you can text it, you can do a bunch of different things. And now I'm jumping into the Silhouette Studio software. And I'm going to use the trace tool. First I'll start with my tail feather and I'm just going to click and drag and select that entire area and then click trace. This will now give me the cut lines to create those tail feathers. I'll recreate the same process with the turkey body hit trace and now I have my cut lines for the turkey body. One thing that tends to happen when you trace is that for some reason it creates all these little dots and each one of those dots represents a movement of the blade on your machine. So sometimes this is why you can get those jaggedy cuts. It also takes forever for your machine to cut because it's literally moving a hundred times just to cut out one simple shape. So if you double click on your cut lines in Silhouette Studio, all of the points will show up and you can delete them, you can edit them. Uh, so that's what I did there with the teardrop tail feather so that I would get a really nice smooth cut. And one of the things you can do is you can pull the handles to really get those smooth curves. I'm doing the same process with the turkey body and simply trying to minimize those points into something manageable. Now that I've done that, I want to create the perforated line right down the middle of the turkey body to make it really easy to fold. So I'm just drawing a straight line through the center of the turkey body and then going into line styles and choosing that dotted line. So now it'll make it really simple to fold. Now all that's left to do is to duplicate our pattern so that we get all of our bodies and feathers together to create our place card. So I'm simply doing that by going to object, mirror, and object, duplicate, and that allows me to fill up my paper with as many shapes as possible and really not waste any of that paper. So now here I can create that full 3D turkey if I wanted to, or several of the flat ones. Next, I want to create a small slit in the feathers that I'll use to actually hold the names. So I'm going to go into the Draw a Line tool and select that arc 
and just I'm just drawing a very small curve that then I can rotate into the correct position and that will make it super simple and easy to create a, a place for those name tags to go. Once I've got one that I really like, I can simply copy and paste or duplicate it as many times as I need in order to have the right amount of tail feathers to hold those name tags. Now one thing I would say is to think strategically in terms of the kind of project you're making. Are you using two kinds of paper in order to create a dual toned look or are you using all of one sheet of paper? Those things will determine how you arrange your pattern in your design space. So now that I've gotten everything decided, I'm gonna go into send and I'm choosing the right settings for my project, which is cardstock, making sure that the blade length is to the correct depth and I'll send it to my machine to cut. For this first turkey, I loaded my cut mat with white cardstock in 12 by 12 and I just cut all of the feathers and bodies out of this one sheet of paper. So now I'm taking the turkey bodies <laughs> and folding them along that perforated line that I created and I'm attaching them together using some tape and you can see here that that creates that 3D shape. So I'm simply attaching one side of each turkey to another until I feel like it's full enough that I can then close that shape entirely and have that full 3D body. So here you can see it's taking shape, quite literally. So once you feel like you have attained the fullness that you want, take your last shape and apply adhesive to both sides and close that turkey body so that you don't have any open ends. So now you can see I have a cute little 3D turkey body. And now I'm going to grab the tail feather that has the slit for the name because I want that to be right in the center. And I'm just determining the distance here that I want it to have. And I'm gonna attach those tail feathers in a fan-like arrangement until I get the full body of the turkey feathers now you could if you are going to emboss these or do anything special to the tail feathers like I did I would actually suggest that you go ahead and do that first but since I was kind of creating this as I went I didn't realize that I was gonna do that until later so it's definitely doable to do it the way that I did but if you are going to manipulate the individual pieces I would suggest doing that before you start to attach them all together into the one large turkey place card. Now because I wanted this to look nice and clean from the back and not see all those individual pieces, I went ahead and took a broken down turkey body and redeemed it by <laughs> using that circle portion to enclose all those tail feathers and make it look nice and clean. So I decided that I wanted to emboss my tail feathers and I'm simply doing that by taking a ranger emboss pen so that I could get a really intentional placement and I'm simply drawing over like a small border on each of the tail feathers and then I'm going to apply the embossing powder. So now you definitely want to do this with a sheet of paper underneath so that you don't get the embossing liquid on your desk space or your workspace and it makes it really easy to clean up your embossing powder once you have it, uh, applied it to your paper project. Tap off the excess put it to the side and go ahead and put away your embossing powder. One thing that helps to have on hand is a small soft paintbrush to brush off any of the excess powder that may attach itself to your project. A really easy way to put away excess embossing powder is to take that sheet of paper and fold it lightly just to create a little tunnel or funnel and it goes really easily right back into your container. So now I'm going to take my heat gun and turn that on and start to apply heat to those tips that I've placed the embossing powder on and you'll see that little by little it starts to melt and become that really beautiful glossy embossed liquid metal kind of look. I think it's really pretty and it's a lot of fun. One quick and easy tip to keep in mind when you are embossing paper is to actually heat both sides of the paper because it can tend to warp. 
because of that chemical reaction that's going on. So if you heat both sides of the paper, it can help that warp actually correct itself. And for this particular little turkey, everything is done and all I need to do is add the name. So I'm going to use a gold gel pen since that's the color scheme that I have chosen. And I'm going to letter the person's name, in this case it's my mother Daisy, and do some faux calligraphy on that. And you can see just how easily and quickly this comes together. It slides right into that slit perfectly. And we have our very own little customized turkey place card, which I think looks really nice. Again, this is a flat design, so I think it looks especially nice laid on your plate or your napkin to create that nice table setting. Now, if you're interested in making the stand-up 3D turkey that I showed at the beginning of my intro, that is what I'm gonna do next. So I wanted to make these two-toned and I used a double-sided cardstock for the tail feathers. It doesn't matter what you choose for your turkey body because they all of those uh, wrong sides will be taped together. But this is a really easy way to create that two-toned look with a minimum of supplies. So I'm gonna take those turkey bodies and make sure that I fold the part that I want to be stuck together towards the outside so that I'm able to see the color that I do want. I'm gonna attach these just like I did the original and I'm gonna start adding the tail feathers. Now again, this is fully customizable, so if you wanted those patterns to be interchangeable or rather in a repeating pattern, you could do that or you could have each side be one separate pattern, which is what I eventually went with. Once you've got your tail feathers all in place, it's time to make the back side of the turkey. So we're gonna do the exact same process. We're just starting with half the turkey already done. So we're gonna lay down our first turkey body and then begin to attach all of the other pieces until we now have our full 3D turkey. Now, one thing I would suggest if I were to go back and do this again is that if I were gonna make the 3D turkeys my main objective, I would actually make the bottom portion of the turkey body a bit flatter rather than so rounded because that will allow it to stand more sturdily and stably. So I'm actually going to do that myself with a pair of scissors, but if you were to think ahead, you could totally put that into your actual pattern. So just by making sure all of your body parts <laughs> are flat, you can take some scissors and cut across the bottom portion of that to make it flatter and then it stands perfectly well and it's really cute. Once again, we're now ready to add our name. So I'm taking a corresponding color of cardstock and lettering the person's name, in this case, Sophia, and just sliding that right into the slit. One thing I will say is if you are gonna do the 3D one, you might want to choose a double-sided cardstock so you don't have that white strip in the back of your turkey. But everything is ready to go. So now you can set your table and choose which of your turkeys you are going to use. In this case, I'm showing you both. And I just think they turned out so fun and so cute and so festive. So there it is. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family and loved ones. I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday remembering all of the wonderful things that we get the opportunity to wake up to each day. Please subscribe and stay a while and also let me know what you would like to see from me in the future. Bye.